Welcome to Original Mind Zen Sangha. Tonight's Dharma talk is given by Johnson Miller. So, in, uh, I was in junior high, and in uh, gym class, we were doing track and field sorts of uh, exercises one day. And uh, one of them was a stand and long jump. And I was watching, I was in line for it, and I'm watching all the people in front of me jumping. And I was really anxious about it. I was, oh, I was making, you know, seeing how far they jumped and kept having the story going like, oh, I gotta, I gotta jump further than them. I gotta be the, the best at this. And it was a sort of story I, I was telling myself a lot in, in those, uh, in those years where, you know, I have to be the best at something. I've got to master something. Although it was a really weird story for me to t- be telling myself because I wasn't master of anything. I wasn't the best at anything. Um, had, um, you know, I was actually a pretty lazy and undisciplined person and, um, you know, no self-esteem, which is probably why I was telling that, uh, that story. Um, but I say these sorts of things with myself over and over again. I got to be the best, got to master whatever this, uh, this thing is. Um, it's a weird story that I was just seemed incapable of fulfilling. Um, so anyway, I got up to the line for my, uh, for my jump and I'm super anxious and I'm, I'm pumping my arms, getting ready to do the jump. And then, um, and then a great question came to me, why? And uh, suddenly all the anxiety about it just dropped away. And I was like, oh, boy, that's so, the story is so stupid. Why do I got to be the best at this? Why I got to jump further than anybody else? So all the anxiety was gone. And I just, I, I jumped and, and I was very pleased. With my, it, it was a very respectable jump. I mean, it wasn't the furthest by any means, but you know, quite, quite respectable. And I was very happy with it. I mean, not because it was, you know, like I did my best sort of thing, but I, and I, you know, I think this was an extraordinary um, realization for a junior high school student. It was a very odd thing. I, I was pleased with the jump because I had the sense like, oh, that was my jump. Um, and uh, so this, uh, this memory has, has had a big impact on me. It's, it's something I've gone back to a whole bunch of times in my life. But, well, obviously, here I am um, talking about it again. And I think, you know, a lot of the other kids in the gym there might have had uh, their own sorts of stories going on in their heads. You know, some of them like, oh, I'm the greatest person in the world, get the hell out of my way. Or, um, you know, I'm not worth anything, so I won't even try because, you know, nothing's good's going to happen. Or somebody else might have been thinking, oh, everybody in the world's out to get me. So if they don't jump well, it's like, oh, somebody distracted me. It's their fault. And other folks just weren't neurotic like me and just jumped and didn't care about it. Um, so good for them. Um, but, you know, we, I mean, we all um, have stories that we tell about ourselves and, and some of them are perfectly fine and healthy and, and some are the ways that we uh, make meaning and coherence out of our lives. So, I mean, it's good, it's meaningful stuff and, and some of these stories are, um, are uh, totally unhelpful um, and take us away from, uh, from reality. And I think we can look at these repetitive stories as one uh, expression of the, the skanda of, um, of impulse and, and uh, vol- volition. So the, the you know, five skandhas, this Buddhist model of, of the, sort of how people work, I guess. So you got uh, consciousness where encounter some phenomenon and uh, consciousness of that arises. Um, and then from that the impulse or, or volition kicks in. So based on past experiences with similar phenomena perhaps, or um, sort of knee-jerk reaction, whatever kicks in, um, but then uh, in how we respond to it, and then a um, percept, which shapes then perception of the phenomenon, like so literal perception, you know, how it looks or, or sounds to us, which then kicks in uh, feeling, so that judgment about is this phenomenon uh, pleasant or unpleasant or uh, just indifferent to it, and from all that, then we construct form. The, the fifth of the skandhas, um, the sort of that, that movie that we make that we think is is reality. You know, sort of like what things look like, as well as the stories we tell about it and our judgments. So, like right now, form is I'm, I'm looking at this computer screen and I see these uh, seven squares and and then the various colors and I hear myself and I see Tom there and. And you know my story about Tom is that for some reason he hates me and look at him he's giving me stink eye for some reason and so these 
the story of form can become just so divorced from reality because Tom actually loves me. Um, and, and I think that uh, that skanda of, uh, of impulse, so those, uh, th those uh, patterns that are ingrained repetitive uh, uh, patterns that we respond with, I think is, for me, it's one of the, I think the most interesting, helpful, uh, greatest of the, the insights of, of Buddhism. I think it's just an extraordinary teaching. Um, that just great insight in how we operate as human beings uh, and also a very useful one because once we recognize that it provides sort of a roadmap for how to deal with um, maybe un unhelpful things that we're, uh, that we're doing or uh, dealing with problems that we might be having. Um, and um, now that, that version of the skandhas I gave, you know, the one into that, that's a very formulaic sort of expression of the skandhas. Maybe it's more um, you know, how you might see it laid out in a, um, in one of the, the suttas or something, but I, maybe it's more useful to think of the, the five sort of these, these discrete functions that happen that then all feed into one another, all shape one another and are, are shaped by, by all the others. So impulse is um, knee-jerk reactions. These, these um, patterns that we use, uh, some quite helpful are um, they, you know, so form, the movie that would make our stuff, it then becomes part of what we perceive and feeds back into those uh, impulses and impulse feeds into feeling and, and all of the other ones. Um, so these stories that we tell ourselves are, can be expressions of, of impulse that the more we tell the story, the more entrenched it becomes. Uh, the more entrenched it becomes, the more we tell the story, um, the more, um, the more it shapes our responses to phenomena, the further we perhaps get from, uh, from reality. Um, but recognizing this impulse function then is helpful because then it provides a way out. And in fact, so think about all of uh, pretty much any Buddhist practice uh, that you've been taught, you know, Zazen or Vipassana, Huado, um, engaging the five uh, hindrances, any sort of mindfulness practice. All of them uh, are always taught over and over uh, you know, so doing zazen as thoughts arise, and which often can do so as a result of these um, these volitions, this this skanda of volition that um, just keep arising. What do we do? Well, we look at it, we acknowledge it, let it go, and bring our focus back to our our breathing, our counting, or wide open awareness, whatever your practice happens to be, or, or bring your attention back to the hua do, um, and. Um, and so, you know, we do this over and over again, and uh, um, over time, um, weaken those uh, hindrances or weaken those uh, those impulses um, until they they arise less and less. And perhaps one day, maybe a particular story to tell about ourselves uh, stops. Um, and so, what happened then the next time I, I went up to the line to uh, to jump? Um, well. I said, oh no, um, how far has everybody else jumped? I gotta jump the furthest. I gotta, I gotta be the best of this. Because of course I did, because right, it's a it's this the impulse. There, there's re entrenched repetitive stories that we tell about ourselves. They don't just uh, they don't just go away. But you know, later over the years after that, and I would remember that that instance, um, they would uh, similar sorts of thoughts would arise and, and sometimes I'd recognize them for what they were and could sort of let them go in the moment. And a lot of times I couldn't, or sometimes I wouldn't because we take pleasure, no matter how dysfunctional, um, some of our, you know, stories or fantasies might be, uh, we take pleasure in them. Like we were talking about, um, um, self-righteous anger, um, the, before, uh, starting here today and, you know, boy, there's so much pleasure in that. You know, so sometimes we don't want to let those those things go. So sometimes I'd let it go. Sometimes I didn't. And that story I used to tell about myself weakened uh, over time. And so presumably I've been able to get closer and closer to uh, to reality. You know, and paying attention really helps. Um, it's it always seems like it's taken me a lot of work to deal with you know, any sort of these um, uh, uh, story loops or behavioral loops that are part of this expression of, uh, of impulses for me. Um, you know, at some point I find like, oh, I just, I just have to decide, no, I'm done with that story. Uh, I just, I reject it. I'm, it's not, uh, it's not useful. I'm done with it. 
I'm not going to let it roll anymore. But then, of course, that story would roll again. Um, and, uh, you know, sometimes I catch it, sometimes it wouldn't. And I just decide again, OK, I'm, I'm done with that. I'm not doing it anymore. That the, the pleasure I get from that story um, is dysfunctional or it's just not as helpful as, um, as something else or not as helpful as, as awakening or, or whatever. So I'm just done with it. And then I decided again. And then I would decide it again and decide it again. Um, so it's as if we have that that deciding that uh, simply that I should say that um, cultivating that letting go like, has to become the new impulse. Then so some impulses are, are helpful. It has to become the new uh, the new pattern, the new we create for ourselves, the new story. Um, so I'd like to think that you know now if I. Or, or what I guess I prefer is if I get up to that line, uh, the next time, the only story I'd be telling myself is just jump, 